Greetings, you all. Okay, I'm so excited about this full moon and I just love talking about it. It's one of my most favorite things to talk about is how the astrology is unfolding. And we have the full moon coming in one hour. It's going to be coming in on a Saturn hour. It's a Capricorn full moon. Capricorn is about achievement, success, perfect timing, patience, um, patience, and your structures. And so we are having an opportunity to really focus on ourselves. Now, what I see in my work with my clients is the greatest challenge that people are having in this energy is that people are very relationship driven. Um, there is often in the psyche of women, especially men have it too, this idea of like relationship as the highest goal, as the highest form of achievement for us. And the North node is currently in Aries. And that means, I'm sorry, I'm hot y'all. <laughs> With the North node in Aries, we are being asked to focus on ourselves only to not be considering your life from the perspective of how will your life and your choices impact other people. This is a really challenging thing for most people to do, especially women, because we have children, we have husbands, we have all these things, these external agreements, these external um, contracts that force us out of our own self selfhood just your selfhood right just the part of you so many many women don't know what they really want except that they want to make other people happy they want other people to like them <laughs> they want to be accepted and and um and held high in high esteem by others and so they compromise their own integrity in very subtle and extreme ways that cost them at the deepest parts of themselves. And this full moon is coming in to say, where are you giving your authority? Where are you giving your power away to another? And the work, because we have had the North Node in Aries for like the North Node is now at 12 degrees. So that means that it's more than halfway through Aries. So we probably have the North Node there for another you know, eight or nine months. And that energy is saying, focus on yourself. Like, what is it that you are up to? What is the universe trying to do through you? And this, this understanding of relationship as the highest level of achievement is a people perspective. It's just a people perspective. And what happens is, you know, I, I see so many videos about, you know, trying to keep people from cheating on you. He's a cheater and they're che all of that sort of stuff. We don't own human beings. We don't own other people. Other people truly are free to move about. And we make these agreements and these contracts that have us fighting against our own nature. And so it's important to understand where the definitions of our understanding of relationship come from. And they come from notions of white supremacy and ownership and, um, and the need for the masculine to dominate the feminine because the feminine is where everything comes from. Women give birth to all human beings and human beings are the greatest commodity that we have in this time frame, in this system that human beings are the the producers of creation, the human, human beings create music, human beings create, you know, tools and resources that allow us to live every day. Human beings build buildings, all that. And women are the structure that create human beings. And so it's very important that we begin to understand the nature of our power as women so that we're not selling it for cheap. And I mean that, that those, that language isn't really great. But what I'm saying is understand how you function so that when you are sharing your power with others, however you do that, 
you understand the value of what you're offering. You're not just so desperate. You're not so, you know, like they say, pick me, right? You're not thinking that you are lacking in any way. You are the producer of reality. You are it. It doesn't exist without you. So it's very important for us during this time to understand our authority. How does that authority really function in alignment with cosmic order, with divine order, with nature's order, right? And if you look at religions, most, most Abrahamic religions define womanhood as secondary to manhood. And that's just not true. It's just not true. It's like the woman holds the memory, the, the DNA that reproduces life. So, and you know, people like to say, well, she can't do that without a man. Well, that's actually not true either because there is something called parthenogenesis where women in their purest understanding of who they are can reproduce life just simply through desire, right? Like literally you can will your spirit and your body into the creative process without having a sperm and you can get pregnant and have a baby. It's, it's documented. You can go check it out. You can go read about it in other places, right? Um, which is, like I said, so it's called parthenogenesis. So this Capricorn energy is inviting us into deeply becoming loyal to ourselves for the purpose of understanding who you are, what you have, what you offer, your value, how you benefit the reality, how you are meant to function. It's literally just like knowing who you are before you give it away, <laughs> before you, you know, and the culture co-ops us with all of this sexuality and all of these fairy tale narratives and all of these belief systems that we need men in order to be fully realized as women. And that is absolutely not true. It's important to know that marriage is a made up construct. The way that we do relationships are made up constructs. This idea of ownership is an illusion. It is an idea that is, is it an idea that is false. We just have agreed to it. So in this, um, in this full moon, we have Neptune at the 29th degree, which is saying, let go of your illusions, let go of the delusional aspects of you that believe and practice things that are not true. And then we have Lilith and Virgo, and Lilith is about your purest desire. Like what is really benefiting you? Can you tell yourself the absolute truth? I had a writing teacher who used to say to me, oh, Georgina Lindsay, God bless you, wherever you are, Georgina Lindsay. She would say, write like everyone you love is dead because that is when you will be the most truthful. If you aren't in your mind, in your subconscious, holding on to the feelings that what you're saying and what you're thinking is going to disappoint others. And we have to give ourselves permission to get to the place where we are not thinking about our own needs in, in connection to the needs of others. Just for a moment, I'm not saying, I'm just saying give you, if nothing else, if, if you didn't have to take care of anyone else, if no one else mattered, if it was just you, what the fuck would you want? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking about? And for many of us, we will be trying to recreate somebody else to give us love and all that sort of stuff. But how can you love yourself? This addiction to external, um, validation, to externalized happiness, to projecting our ideas of what we're worth and value out into the future and based upon somebody relying upon us or somebody needing us is what's dying right now. And the question is, if you could have it your absolute way, what would that be? What would that be? Don't think of anybody else. Don't allow yourself, just ask, what would I do? Who would I be? If it was only up to me, if it was only for me and I could have it my way and no one else was included, what would that be? Because that is your pathway to integrity and freedom and, and, the, and the universe blessing you for being who you're meant to be and not who you have been co-opted to be.
Peace and blessings, y'all. Bye-bye.